Hello everyone! Today we're going to have a little deep dive into the AI of Project Meatball. While this is by no means a tutorial, it should give you an idea of how to implement AI in a turn-based RPG, if that's what you're after. It'll certainly give you some insight on how I did it, anyway. So, we'll start with a very quick primer on how stats and moves work in Project Meatball, because they are pretty different to how most other games do it. An affinity is an attack and defense stat for a single damage type. Any affinity attached to a character is called a natural affinity. A move is an action a character can take in combat, and similarly can be attached to the character as a base move. Equipment also has affinities and moves attached to it. For example, a sword will have a physical affinity with a positive attack, no defense, and a slash move attached to it, whereas a shield will have no attack, a positive defense, and some sort of raised defense move. When a character queries a particular stat against a damage type, for example their fire defense, they will get all their natural affinities and equipment affinities of that damage type and add them up. Similarly, when getting available moves, all base and equipment moves are retrieved. So, with all that said, we can finally start talking about the AI itself. The AI is made up of two components, an AI brain and multiple AI conditions. The brain keeps track of which party is friendly and which is the enemy. It also contains a list of default moves, one of which will be performed at random if none of the conditions are true. At the moment there is no constraint that says these moves need to actually be in the character's move list, so I'm making sure they match manually when I add them. But that's an area for further improvement. The brain will loop through all its conditions until one of them returns true. If this happens, it will perform the move attached to the condition. If it finishes looping through all the conditions with none of them returning true, or if it doesn't even have any conditions, it will pick a move from the default move list at random and pick a random target. Now, conditions are where this starts to get interesting. Conditions are built to be expandable, meaning anything you can come up with will be compatible with the brain, so long as it can return a boolean, and obviously works with the information available to the character. They all start with the base AI condition class, which contains a bunch of virtual methods, which means they can be overridden by a child script. The brain calls the compare and action method, which checks its own condition and updates the brain's targets if it's true, while also returning true to tell the brain to stop looping. When a target meets the requirements, such as having health below the required threshold, it is added to the potential targets list. All conditions have a boolean called target highest, which will decide whether to send the character with the highest or lowest value in that stat as the selected target from the potential target list. In order to change what is actually being compared, the child script needs to override the compare stat and get stat methods to decide what actually is being looked at. But it is possible to override any methods if I really wanted to go wild with a condition and do something pretty unique, for bosses for example. Currently there are two conditions, which are customizable, so they can also be reused for fairly different results. The first of which is the stat compare. This condition is used to compare any stat attached to the character's script, as in anything but affinities. These include max health, current health, speed, and time units. Code looks like this, and as you can see, all it does is override get stat to return the selected stat and compare a stat to, well, do the same thing really. I should be able to refactor that so only gets that needs to be overridden. In fact, I definitely can and should do that. This condition can now be used in all sorts of ways. A character can check to see who is nearest to death to use a powerful finisher, or find out which enemy is going to move next by having the least time units to use a stun and force them back in the turn order, or just find the slowest character and try to take them out before they even have a go. The other condition, as you might have guessed, is the Affinity Compare, which needs a damage type, and then compares either Attack, Defense, or if they have the Heals Against Flag. Code looks like this. <laughs> you can tell I wrote this one after the first because I actually made compare stat use get stat. Now, with this condition, we can check if a character has a low enough defense to a particular damage type. Say, the character does fire damage, so let's find the character with the least fire defense and burn them. Or, if the character has a particular weakness, target the enemy with the highest attack for that particular damage type to protect themselves. Maybe find the person with the highest life attack to attack the healer. Or, if he's undead and wants to check if any friendlies heal against death magic so we can blast them with a death spell to heal them. And, well, that's it really. I plan on creating conditions that check against status effects and one for moves, but as you can see, even without creating any more conditions and writing any more code, the AI is already pretty versatile. There is definitely room for improvement. I'll I'll want to extend the whole system to allow for multiple conditions to be met before a move is selected to allow for more complex AI strategies, especially for bosses. But what's there is already an 
enough to create some interesting gameplay and will be used for the first playable prototype. Another idea I've had is for difficulty settings to be related to AI rather than have an easy mode where enemies had weaker stats. I could just disable all AI conditions and only have them use default moves at random. The game will definitely be a lot harder when your opponents are focusing your healer and making smart choices about matching moves with damage types, so disabling that will make the game way easier without actually having to modify stats. I hope you enjoyed this look into Project Meatball's AI. I took a break from developing Project Meatball this week to learn some Godot and try to create a game in a couple of weeks. Making small, easily finished games is definitely a weakness of mine, so I wanted to give that a go. I've still got a few days left on this project, so I'll probably talk about its development next week. As usual, please leave a comment, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, oh, oh and uh, apparently I'm supposed to tell you to hit that bell thing too, and most importantly, I'll see you in the next video.